Victoria is going after engineers. Let's have a look. Good afternoon, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Now, a viewer sent me this article, and you know, it's the middle of the day and I'm working, but I've still got my coffee, and I thought we'd have a look at it because it really hits close to home for me. Now, Victorian Labor plans to slug engineering firms for pro personal development, or I'd call that professional development, PD. As a professional, everyone's required to do professional development, get CPD points. And you can go do training and courses. You can have trade reps come and give you a free lunch and teach you about things. And then you can log them, or you can go to a national conference. Now, the reason professional bodies push for this is that they want to have a reason that you need to pay them. They want to have the authority to say if something is worth CPD or not and, you know, make money off you. There's a huge conflict of interest there. And this, I mean, just look at what we read all about this morning about the RBA wanting to try and, you know, increase uh, the economy because it's slowing down. Oh, sorry, it's reasonable. So they're cutting the cash rate. Now, just think about this cost per engineer in firms. Now, I'm, I've got a small architectural practice. I have to hire engineers and their fees are not as high as you think. So let's have a read. Engineering firms in Victoria will be required to fork out approximately $6,000 per engineer per year for continuing professional development to remain licensed under a new scheme the Andrews government hopes to legislate this month. $6,000 will be required to... Uh, wow, that's crazy. Independent costings prepared by the State Parliamentary Budget Office for Liberal Democrat Upper House uh, MP David Limbrick show the extra cost of assessment, registration and compliance for the engineering sector will be between $148 million and $200 million per year. Okay, now let's just pull this apart and think about this. So here I am, I'm sourcing quotes for engineers. Now I can go to two firms. There's one firm that's say 30% cheaper than the other. Who will most likely get the work? Well, Florian, you want to assess all these other criteria. Often the price will make the difference. At the moment, it's a tough market, so people need to compete. Now, what if one firm, instead of having to pay these onerous requirements, having all these engineers based in Victoria, might have only one engineer based in Victoria and most of the work done offshore. Okay, that's what is happening. This, stuff like this, implemented by dodgy Andrews government, is creates an incentive for people to offshore work. And all of these service industries, all of them, can be done overseas. Every single one. And then checked over here. I know this because I've lost jobs competing with big firms here in the city that offshore all the drafting work. The Labor government and industry body, Engineers Australia, which stands to benefit from compulsory licensing and training fees, there you go, argue the reform will increase safety. So, will it increase safety? Will it increase safety? What do I get points for? I can go to the National Institute of Architects conference. The last one I went to, I... It was just so airy-fairy rubbish. It wasn't discussing anything to do with econ economics. It wasn't discussing any of the threats to the profession. You know, I was concerned that, okay, you've got project managers taking more and more of the work away from architects. How can architects compete? What about our education system that we're, you know, we've got four unis churning out graduates and a lot of them aren't finding work. You've got people coming out of university with no actual practical skills. Shouldn't these things be discussed at the national conference? Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was just, you know, a bunch of arty farty stuff and so much focus on design, which is important, but I would want some variety. What about BIM technology? What about point cloud technology? None of that was hardly discussed. It's just getting big names from overseas to brag. That, that's what it was. Maybe, maybe I'm getting a bit bitter anyway. But engineers, the state opposition, and the Liberal Democrats have accused Engineers Australia of a cash grab at the expense of its own members, arguing the measure will burden industry with unnecessary costs and red tape. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this is why, this is why I argue to shift the window. This is why you can be happy the LDP, the Liberal Democrats, a minor party here in Australia, has people sitting in the 
upper house in Victoria to bring these things to the table, to challenge these questions. This is why we need more than just a two-party system. This is why you can't waste your vote. Okay? So good work. Good work, David. Good work, mate. So let's keep going. The Professional Engineers Registration Bill passed the lower house last month and is expected to be debated in the Legislative Council in coming weeks. Labour holds 18 seat in the 40-member chamber, meaning it will require the cooperation of three of 11 crossbenchers to pass the bill. I hope they don't comply. Under the bill, people will need to be registered if they provide professional engineering services in the civil, structural, fire safety, electrical or mechanical engineering fields. Now, I know my concern with this is we have this mishmash of systems all across the country. We have these mishmash of systems all across the country. It's just crazy. Maybe they should just recognize pre-established systems. It would involve the creation of a business licensing authority and assessment entities which are likely to be professional engineering associations such as Engineers Australia, with engineers required to renew their registration every three years. The bill is modelled on a scheme operating in Queensland, currently the only Australian state where engineers are required to have a licence. According to the PBO costings, the scheme would cost the state government $5.9 million to implement. Okay, why couldn't they? Why couldn't they? Here's an idea. Why don't you just require people to be registered in Queensland and not bother with any infrastructure? Maybe. Could you do that? Could Victoria do that? Or is that thinking outside the box? You know, adopt it, Queensland, as a national system. The target largest cost impact to engineers registered under the scheme is the area of CPD, Continuing Professional Development, which by 2324, when the scheme is proposed to be fully implemented, is estimated to cost approximately $6,000 per year for each registered professional engineer. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Geelong-based John Lambert, who has worked as a mechanical and agricultural engineer for more than 50 years, said the impact on sole traders and small engineering businesses will be significant. Yes, exactly. Will it add anything to the industry? Okay. I mean, I'm registered with the Board of Architects for, and I have to pay a yearly fee. What do I get for it? Nothing. Nothing. It, it, it's designed for consumer protection. It's designed for consumer protection. That's what it is. Now, is requiring engineers and architects and this to do these CPD things, is that going to add anything to consumer protection? I doubt it. Engineers Australia have not at all been transparent about this with regards to their members, Mr. Lambert said. It's quite obvious that they're driven by their own agenda and it's not an agenda that engineers support. Mr. Limbrick said industry was already well regulated by professional bodies and cited concerns about provisions in the legislation which would allow investigating officers to enter properties and carry out search activities without a warrant. Without a warrant. Well, there you go. See, it's little little stuff like this that gets sne- snuck in. And if you're running your business from home like I am, you know, how, how would you feel about that? How would you feel about that? We have concerns expressed to us by industry about protection of intellectual property and trade secrets. Yes, yeah, that's true, the Liberal Democrats MP said. Coalition Treasury spokeswoman uh, Louise Stanley said the PBO figures showed the licensing scheme would represent significant additional cost for industry for no demonstrated increase in safety. Mm. Even $148 million at the lowest end of the PBO estimates is an extraordinary amount of money for the engineering profession to pay when there isn't a demonstrated failure. Okay, this is Victoria, remember. And you can't blame the engineers for all of the issues they've had in Victoria with regards to fire cladding. That's specification issues, and a lot of that is imported products that are dodgy. Maybe they need to look at having more mechanisms in place to, ass- to ensure imported products meet our requirements. Labour argue that we need this bill because the amount of building works that are going on and the need to attract engineers, this will make it harder to attract. What the hell? Huh? So they're saying because it's, they need it because we're having trouble attracting engineers, so they want to add cost to having engineers on staff. Well, it's Labour. I mean, come on. What do we expect? Andrews is, is off the nutter. 
A spokeswoman for Treasurer Tim Pallas said the registration scheme would make sure highly qualified and experienced engineers develop and oversee Victoria's infrastructure projects. No, no, it wouldn't. Not at all. Nope. No, no, sorry, Tim, you're wrong. It would mean the cost for employers to have engineers goes up by $6,000 per engineer. That's all it will mean. That's it. And sole traders will have uh, just the additional cost of their bottom line. Engineers that are highly qualified and professional and experienced won't need to go to a trade lunch to get stupid CPD points or won't need to learn something. They'll be learning themselves. They'll be doing their own research. They'll be keeping up with trade literature. Okay? They're already doing this. Given the size of the infrastructure spend and more engineering work working here from interstate and overseas, we need a system in place that allows qualifications and experience to be checked. Well, yes, that's fine. Okay, that is fine. I agree with that. That's a good idea. But that is the responsibility of the project management and architectural team. Okay? Here in, a, okay, here in Queensland, I don't mind the RPEQ. It's convenient for me. But you can just as easily ask your engineer for evidence of their registration or for evidence of their membership of a professional body. You know, where's your, uh, your membership of Engineers Australia? I need to see that evidence. Can you please send me a copy of your degree? Oh, can you send me a copy of your insurance? I need to get your insurance certificates. Okay? That's normal. That's what you do when you're putting a proposal together. That's showing you, if this is falling apart, if this is falling apart, they've got more issues with regards to their quality assurance and their project management teams. So they're trying to go at the engineers when their own teams aren't ensuring that they're getting qualified people on the jobs. So... I, I, yeah, I would bet it's more than that. More inexperienced project managers putting teams together. That's what I'm putting my carton on. Engineers Australia Public Affair, Affairs Minister Jonathan Russell said his organization estimated the cost to an engineer to become registered under the scheme would be less than $300. Yes, but then you've got to pay every year again and again and again. Engineer, any engineer who is not prepared to undertake continuous professional development should not be able to call themselves an engineer for the sake of community safety and consumer protection, Mr. Russell said. Well, that's the thing. That is the thing. I can do my own research as an architect. I can you know, research literature, research books, all of this stuff. And I'll probably get more from that than going to a, a conference. I'll probably get more from that than going to a conference. I will get more knowledge that I can apply to my day-to-day -day from a quantity surveying uh, text or magazine than from going to a conference, okay? Or a trade lunch, a trade lunch where the trade rep comes and tells me about their products and maybe tells me some NCC things. So I, I'm dubious about it. I am dubious about it. But that's just my own bias coming through there. An engineer will not have to become a member of Engineers Australia to become registered. Engineers would have the right to choose from several different assessment entities as part of the process of becoming registered should the legislation pass Parliament. True. That's true. But come on, guys. It gives you more relevance. It definitely gives you more relevance. So, I mean, remember. Remember, everyone. The engineers who worked on Opal, on the cross, they were registered in Queensland. Did that make any difference to the fact that the subbies made a mistake? Did it? Nope. I tell you, I tell you what I would argue for. What legislation before we go after the engineers or the professionals, I would go after the person at the top of these projects. I would go after the project managers. I would I would prefer that government implements processes that every project manager needs to be licensed and that they need to meet certain CPD requirements or provide evidence if they're involved in the construction industry. That's what I would argue before you start implementing it to other people down the process. Because when they can be more rigorous, it'll flow all the way through. And so many of them don't even do their job properly. They don't even follow the steps and procedures. They don't even do their own risk analysis. But that's just my two cents, guys. Please let me know what you think. So like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Ding the bell to let me know, you know. Oh, no. Ding the bell to see my daily videos. And if, if I get angry, you may get more than one a day. But I'll see you all later. Bye for now.